What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So today I want to run you through another coupon website that you can utilize to make money flipping products directly from your laptop, right? Getting them, getting them delivered to your apartment or your house, wherever you're located, and then shipping them into FBA or simply listing them on other sites as well, like Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari to make money with online arbitrage. Now, in the last coupon arbitrage video, I did talk about how things are shifting a little bit from, you know, the old way that you used to be able to do coupon arbitrage, which was literally buy something with the intention of reselling it back on Amazon, right? So for a perfect example of how that would go and make sure that if you're watching this with the intention of reselling back on Amazon or just, you know, with an intrigue to coupon arbitrage or arbitrage in general, watch this video in its entirety because I want to explain both sides of the equation and where you really should be focusing your attention, in my opinion, going forward with these coupon sites. So how you used to do it, here's a good example, one that, that sticks out to me right away. Here's one as well, right? So right here is a perfect example of how it used to be done, okay? So here's a, here's a product right here. It says the retail value is uh, 30, about 36 bucks roughly on Amazon. You can get 80% off, so you're buying it for 720 with a coupon code, and then you would basically ship this back into Amazon and list it at the Amazon price of 36 bucks and make the difference, right? So let's just go into Amazon to see if this actually checks out, and it is a good product, and I haven't looked at any of these deal go, go, go products, but I still do use this website. I just use it differently, and we'll get into how I use that here in a second, okay? So right here, perfect example. It's got 19 ratings, looks like a solid, decent listing. It's got good pictures. It retails for 36 bucks. So you need to you need to check many different things, and I've gone through this checklist a million different times, so I'm not gonna bore you with it again, right? We're talking about can you sell it? Is there a margin, right? So take the ASIN, take it into Seller Central, add a product from your Seller Central to see if you actually can sell this or if you're gated in it, right? You also wanna check the sales velocity. So as a general rule of thumb, if you don't have Jungle Scout, which you know most people should, and I always recommend people that are sourcing with the intention of either selling on Amazon or you know sourcing with the intention to see what sales velocity looks like on Amazon for other similar platforms and other products on those similar platforms that are very, very similar. Jungle Scout is a great tool because it literally shows you what the potential revenue is. Well, obviously that depends on what your list price is, but more importantly, how much it's selling per month and how many daily sales. So you can make an educated decision of if it's a good product and a good product listing, or, and also more importantly, let's say you're sourcing multiple products for that. If it's like a bulk deal site, which is a little bit different from the coupon arbitrage, but I'm going in a million different directions because a lot of people that watch this channel and this content basically enjoy doing a number of these uh, arbitrage business models. So you really wanna understand all the different tools and then kind of use them to your advantage instead of just being stuck completely to doing each business at a time, right? So to give you an example, if you were sourcing another potential, uh, you know, maybe you're sourcing on like a bulk deal site for Amazon, right? It would give you a good indicator of how many of those products you should potentially source depending on how much competition is on that listing and how many sales it's getting, right? That's why I recommend Jungle Scout, but if you don't have Jungle Scout, the general rule of thumb is just stay under 100,000 bestseller rank for coupon products. Each different uh, you know, business model is different, and you know, depending on how much, how deep you're going into inventory, that might change for you. So that's why I recommend getting Jungle Scout. It'll just help you out with the most informed decision for whatever you're sourcing, okay? So in a nutshell, what you used to do is you'd come here, you'd buy this product from Amazon using a coupon code right here. You would get it for $7.20 to your door, and then you would do that over and over and over again with a bunch of different coupon products, ship them all back into Amazon, and sell them for their list price, the retail price, right? Because nobody could use the coupon code on your product if you have the buy box and you are the seller on that, right? They can only use that coupon code for the original seller, which is Pet Tribe US right here, right? So that's how you make the money. That's the difference in the margin for coupon arbitrage. That said, nowadays, there's really two different approaches to it, right? So now, nowadays, you're either going to get hit with IP claims a lot, copyright claims, trademark claims, because other sellers have adjusted and private label sellers have adjusted, and they started to realize that they can just file claim after claim after claim. There's no repercussions, right? So a lot of those claims are baseless. Regardless though, you have to, the onus becomes on you then to prove your authenticity or prove that you're not violating a trademark or prove that you're not infringing on intellectual property by any means. And so it can be a headache a lot of times. And if you plan on scaling that up to any certain degree, the more products you have, the more risk there is for potential claims, right? So that's why I don't recommend that most people do coupon arbitrage like this anymore. You can still make money doing it, although it comes with risks to your account. So there's two sides of the equation, right? 
the first people that you know can do coupon arbitrage are either people that don't really sell a lot on Amazon, right? Because then they can keep their their you know the amount of products that they're buying and reselling back on Amazon coupon arbitrage wise to a minimum, right? So that they can mitigate their risk. And as those claims come in, they can deal with them when they come in. So they're not scaled up to like a couple hundred products a month, right? Which if you scale up to like 30 or 50 or 100 products a month, well, your chance of getting a couple different IP claims where your account gets suspended are super, super high. Whereas if you just did it, you know, maybe like 10 a week, right? Then maybe you get hit with one claim and then you can deal with it. And then maybe you get hit with a claim the next week when you send 20 products in and then you can deal with it, right? So that's the different approach, right? Those are the people and only those type of people that aren't really trying to sell other things on Amazon, right? They're not trying to scale up with like wholesale. They're not reselling books. They're not doing bulk deal arbitrage or anything like that or liquidation with the intention of reselling on Amazon. They're solely doing coupon arbitrage for a little bit of extra cash flow. Those are the only people that should be focused on doing coupon arbitrage like this. For everybody else, which is probably 95 if not more percent of people, you should not be selling, uh, buying coupon arbitrage with the intention of reselling these products back on Amazon because it's not worth it to risk your account or you know constantly be going through the headache of fighting those claims when you can simply use Amazon in other ways to make money a lot easier, number one, because there's scalable, there's scalability in those other forms of arbitrage, right? Whereas this is scalable to a certain degree, but there's kind of a cap to it. You should focus on other forms of arbitrage that don't, that A, are easier, B, are more scalable, and C, and most importantly, don't come with any risk of claims or headaches dealing with stuff like that, right? So then, if that's such an issue, why am I why am I creating videos and tutorials now about coupon arbitrage, right? Because I feel like it's like the pendulum, right? Like people have like completely gone away from all the coupon sites thinking that there's still not opportunities to get good products here, and that is not the case at all. I still leverage coupon arbitrage uh, sites like Deal Go 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 right here to buy products with the intention of reselling them back on other marketplaces because you can still find very, very cheap, high quality products that come with uh, stock images that look great, right? Come with keyworded out SEO descriptions that you can then buy super, super cheap, list on sites like eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari and make a markup in price. Now, I don't scale coupon arbitrage on those other sites up. I usually source like cashback arbitrage products with the intention to resell on those. But don't get me wrong, I still hop on all sorts of sites like Deal Go Go Go. And here's a perfect example of a product that I might buy right here that is super, super cheap, 384 to my door that I could then buy for 384 to my door, list back on Poshmark or Mercari and maybe flip this watch for like 20 bucks because I do it all the time. And I, I always try to go after like cashback watches when I see them because like they flip like that from in my experience on Mercari. Um, I don't really have that much experience selling eBay because I've been suspended for about six months. But if you're if you're not suspended and you can sell on eBay, also a gold mine for watches as well. So there's a lot of opportunity on not just Deal Go Go Go, but all the coupon arbitrage sites. Let me show you an example of this watch right here and how I would approach it and how I would make money. Before we get into that, or we sort through to see another potential opportunity of another deal, which maybe this is one here. It all depends on what you're comfortable spending and what you potentially could make back. If you guys are interested in hopping into Online Arbitrage Pro 3.0 for 50% off, I'm gonna let three more people into the course. So the first three people that go through the link, first link in the description, can get into Online Arbitrage Pro 3.0 for 50% off. So let me show you the example of this watch right here. Like I said, you can get it for 384. So let's check out the listing, right? Because if we're getting it for 384, yeah, we're excited that it's a, that it's a cheap listing, but we also want to make or a cheap uh, product, but we also want to make sure that we're getting good stock pictures and potentially a good SEO out keyword description. And it looks like it does has decent pictures and you can also buy it in multiple different colors. So it's got two decent pictures. Obviously, if you sold this back on Mercari, you'd have to take one more picture because you can't with Mercari, you can on Poshmark and, uh, and eBay, but if you're selling on Mercari, you do have to take at least one picture yourself. You can't list all stock pictures, but people think that that means that you have to take all the pictures yourself but you don't, you can use all the stock photos and then just make the last picture one that you took from your phone or a camera yourself. So it's good that, that there's a, a good listing here. You have decent pictures. You could probably flip this back on Poshmark or Mercari and list it at like 25 bucks and then potentially drop the price slowly and make an offer to a liker for anywhere from like 15 to 20. I've sold watches on Mercari all the way up to 35 bucks. Granted, they're not like high quality watches, but that's a pretty solid markup if you're getting it for like three bucks or even free on a cashback site, right? So there's opportunity 
opportunity to still leverage these sites right here like deal go 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 to make money flipping coupon products just keep in mind that you probably want to avoid flipping them back on amazon unless your intention is to simply do it a little bit to make extra cash flow and you understand the risks that come with with selling those products back on amazon because you're going to get potential claims on your account so let's hypothetically to have some fun here say we listed this and sold this around 20 bucks here and we paid 4.99 for shipping or you could even undercut it a little bit although this is probably a little bit over um i think the it's four ounces on mercari so anything under four ounces roughly causes um or costs uh I think it's $2.99 and anything over four ounces costs $4.99. So we're gonna assume that it costs $4.99. So with the selling fee right here of two bucks and the, the, the shipping fee that, cause I always recommend shipping it in for or offering free shipping on Mercari with another $5. That means that if you take $5 off 18, you would make $13 profit simply for buying this and relisting it back on Mercari. And obviously you're spending about four bucks to get it. So then your net profit margin after everything is still $9. So you're turning $3 into nine dollar profit margin simply by leveraging deal go 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 and buying this watch super super cheap same thing on poshmark right if we slide down here and we list this for 20 bucks on poshmark what would your margin be well it would be 16 dollars on poshmark because obviously um you know the the buyer pays for the shipping on poshmark so you, your margin would be a little bit better uh so if you take that 384 off then your margin on poshmark would be 12 pretty solid as well now this is not just one listing right here there's probably a number of them this is a little bit more of a high risk high reward product i probably wouldn't spend 15 bucks to try to sell this back on poshmark mercari or ebay for like 76 but you could i usually like to go after the cheaper ones and i only really source coupon products like this to act to kind of add to my inventory and add to my buys right i usually try to source cashback products as i'm getting them for free although with cashback products you do have to spend a little bit more money because you got to front the money to get the cash back whereas with coupon products you're literally getting the coupon ahead of time so you don't have to spend as much initially to get the product where you can then make the margin this one might also be a decent product so it looks like a diy christmas tree thing for kids um you're getting it for 340 you can potentially sell it back for like 17. um so there are opportunities here to make money you just have to kind of search through and don't just expect that you either you know regardless of what i teach or what you learn right just because i say that you have to do a business model you know a certain way doesn't mean that you're handicapped to only doing in that way use it as a kind of tool in your tool belt and then once you have your tool belt filled you can then use all of those in whatever way you see fit right so just because this is a coupon website for Amazon doesn't mean you have to resell these products back on Amazon. It's just one way that you can utilize online arbitrage to make money. So I hope you guys like this video. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.